Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build our new and improved LM3914 battery reference voltage kit. This is the old one. I've rebuilt it. Uh, made a new PCB. And so we're going to build it from scratch. The kit comes with two two-pin terminal blocks, a DIP18 socket, an LM3914 DIP IC, three yellow LEDs, three green LEDs, four red LEDs, uh, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 2.2 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 1K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, a monetary push button, and a 50 uh, K ohm variable resistor. So first of all, let's do our, uh, let's place our resistors. The R4 footprint is a 1K ohm resistor. R1 is labeled 470R, 470 ohms. So since resistors aren't polarized, place them in either way. Just make sure you don't mix them up. And your variable resistor, labeled Adjust 100K, is actually a 50K potentiometer. It's a typo. And if you notice on the top, on the right-hand side, there's a screw for adjustment. And on the footprint, there is a, uh, a screw imprint. So make sure that you line, the, from a bird's eye view, the variable resistor up. Um, with the screw facing the screw imprint. So solder those in a place, next we'll do the resistor, the capacitors. Your 2.2 microfarad and your 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors look very similar. You have to read the labels to determine which is which. C1 is 10, 10 micro, C2 is 2.2 micro. There's a long lead and a short lead on the, on the electrolytics. The long leads are the positives. Uh, on the C1 and C2 footprint on the top leads, there's a little tiny plus sign nearest the positive hole. So make sure that your long your long leads are placed in the holes with the with the plus signs next to them, and that the short leads are placed in the opposite holes. Don't turn those around; they are polarized. If you power it up and you have them reverse, you chance blowing them up. Your single ceramic, uh, which is 10 or zero, sorry 0 0.1 microfarads, is placed in the C3 slot. It's not polarized. Both leads are the same size. It doesn't matter which way you place in the hole. So solder those into place, and next we'll do the LEDs. Your diodes. Uh, or rather your LEDs all have short leads and long leads. All of the short leads go into the bottom square leads on here and all of the positive longer leads go in the top. Now what you want to do is place the four reds for low power on the left hand side then three yellows then three greens. Again the long leads are in the top short leads are in the bottom and again the short leads the negative leads are the negatives and the holes are the pads are square so square means negative in this case so solder them into place and next we'll do the terminal blocks and the button it's important when the soldering the uh, LEDs that you place them about uh, three quarters of a centimeter above the board because they won't fit flush down on the board you just have them out a little bit now the uh, terminal blocks they have a screw side and a plastic side Make sure that the screw side is facing outwards for both of them. The screw terminal blocks fit right here, so make sure that, because if you, if you turn, around, turn it around, the screw terminals are facing the socket here, you're not going to be able to wire in your power connection or your reference connections. So, solder those into place, good strong solder connections. Lastly, your button. Your button goes into the SW1 slot right here. It really only fits in one way. Pop it in, make sure it's flush to the board, and solder them into place. Lastly, we'll do our socket. The LM3914 uh, footprint uh, has a little notch on the left hand side right here. The uh, IC socket has a notch on the left hand side and the IC itself has a notch on the left hand side. So from a bird's eye view you want to make sure that you match up you want to ma match up the uh, those notches for the sake of orientation. The notch on the socket faces the left from this perspective and the notch in the IC faces left from this perspective. Now, if you, turn the, if you turn it around, your circuit will not work, and you might very well fry your IC when you power it up. So solder that into place. Be very careful not to, sh to make any shorts while you're soldering your socket into place. Once you're done that, place your IC in, and we'll test it. So what I've got is 9 volts on my reference, 12 volts on my power. 9 volts is going to be my top reference, meaning that's full battery. 9 volts, I'm going to calibrate it so that 9 volts is my full battery. Now your power always has to be at least 2 volts higher than your reference voltage. 
So if you've got a 9 volts top reference, you want to have at least 11 to 12 volts at least. You can have more between. You can have up to 18, I think, uh, on the uh, on the positive on, on the power line. Anyway, so what you want to do is first of all, after you have 9 volts here and 12 volts here, as an example, press this button. Now, this, now we're going to calibrate it using this onboard variable resistor. Now, if you want to keep the LEDs on all the time, you can short this button underneath. As well, I'm going to show you how to do bar graph mode in a minute. Bar graph mode is cooler, but takes more power. Anyway, what you want to do is, no matter what, wherever you start, uh, wherever it starts, the first LED, you want to, right now it looks like, yeah, it's a top voltage, 9 volts. However, you might have the voltage reference based on the, the, vo the, the resistance on the variable resistor. You might have it actually set to, say, 6 volts, volts being a maximum uh, reference. So what you have to do is, that, that might sound a bit confusing, this will help in a minute. I'll do another calibration too. You want to adjust the uh, variable resistor until you can actually see where the LED is. You see how we can see where the LED is now? Now we want to tune it so it's just at the top. There we go. Because if we keep turning it, we're, imagine that there's a whole bunch more LEDs. You know, it, you can basically you can set it so that it's really far out of the spectrum. But as long as you can see it, then you br you bring the LED up to the maximum of voltage. You want to be able to bring it there. Now, if you if you start it up and the LED is right here, if the LED is at say uh, one yellow. Just bring it all, tune it so you're at the full voltage. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, I know. But anyway, right now I've got it set so that nine volts is our maximum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this button down, and I'm going to bring the voltage at my reference point down to zero volts. 5 volts and 1 volt. Pretty neat, huh? Now, you can short the cell line and the bar line, these two little pins here. You can short them for bar graph mode, and I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do that right now, and we're going to do another calibration. I'm going to try to simplify it a bit more because putting it into words is a little bit difficult. Uh, so just give me one second, I'll make that short. So I've set it to bar mode. Again, if you want to keep the LEDs on all the time, short the leads under the button. So, whew, 9 volts, 1 volt, 9 volts, 1 volt. And uh, so there you go. So let's do another calibration from scratch, shall we? Right now I've got 17 volts on my power line and 12 volts set as my, as my maximum reference voltage. So I want to read between 0 and 12 volts on the meter. So what I'm going to do, right now, I'm at full, but just because all the LEDs are lit, are lit up does not mean that we know exactly how where we have a reference set. So what you want to do is, like before, turn it so you can see where the LED is. See, I can turn it 100 times to the right, and it might, it'll might see set to a mysterious voltage that we can't determine. So you want to make sure that you see the LEDs turn off. Okay, there we are. We're good. So, there we go. We've calibrated it. Calibration is very easy. You just have to start it with your, you have to start your max voltage and tune it using the variable resistor so all the LEDs are lit up. So now I'm going to do is in bar mode, I'm going to turn it down from 12 volts. Three volts. I'll just do this slowly. Right now we're at 1.4 volts. 3.15 volts. 6 volts. 8.37 volts. 10.61 volts. And 12 volts. So there you go. So it's very easy to put together. Uh, fun to play with, can be used with your battery system, all sorts of different stuff. It's one of our more popular ones, however, our first design wasn't all that great, so we've improved upon it. Now you've got, uh, especially terminal blocks and a uh, very precise trim resistor, whereas before we had a single turn resistor. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Uh, check us out at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Thanks, guys.